Hello. Hello. Welcome to my first podcast. That's right. It's the first episode of this podcast. So, what do I want to do with this podcast? Well, this podcast is meant to give you material for listening. I'm going to speak English slowly and understandably. So, it should be understandable material for you. I plan to do interviews, I'll tell stories, some of my own stories, I will read stories, maybe read a book at some point, and it will give you some good practice for listening. Now, this first episode is going to be a sort of a test. I'm just going to read a short story, and then... I'm going to explain what happened in the story, and then I will explain a few difficult words from the story. And afterwards, I would recommend that you listen again to the story. After you hear the new words, maybe you know the words, maybe not, but I would recommend to go back and listen again to the story. All right, let's get started. So, the story is called The King and His Hawk by James Baldwin. Genghis Khan was a great king and warrior. He led his army into China and Persia, and he conquered many lands. In every country, men told about his daring deeds, and they said that since Alexander the Great There had been no king like him. One morning, when he was home from the wars, he rode out into the woods to have a day's sport. Many of his friends were with him. They rode out gaily, carrying their bows and arrows. Behind them came the servants with the hounds. It was a merry hunting party. The woods rang with their shouts and laughter. They expected to carry much game home in the evening. On the king's wrist sat his favorite hawk, for in those days hawks were trained to hunt. At a word from their masters they would fly up into the air and look around for prey. If they chanced to see a deer or a rabbit, they would swoop down upon it, swift as an arrow. All day long, Genghis Khan and his huntsmen rode through the woods, but they did not find as much game as they expected. Toward the evening, they started for home. The king had often ridden through the woods, and he knew all the paths. So while the rest of the party took the nearest way, he went by a longer road through a valley between two mountains. The day had been warm, and the king was very thirsty. His pet hawk had left his wrist and flown away. It would be sure to find its way home. The king rode slowly along. He had once seen a spring of clear water near this pathway. If he could only find it now, but the hot days of summer had dried up all the mountain brooks. At last, to his joy, he saw some water trickling down over the edge of a rock. He knew that there was a spring further up. In the wet season, a swift stream of water always poured down here, but now it came only one drop at a time. The king leapt from his horse. He took a silver cup from his hunting bag. He held it out so as to catch the slowly falling drops. It took a long time to fill the cup, and the king was so thirsty that he could hardly wait. At last it was nearly full. He put the cup to his lips and was about to drink. All at once there was a whirring sound in the air, and the cup was knocked from his hands. The water all spilled on the ground. The king looked up to see who had done this thing. It was his pet hawk. 
The hawk flew back and forth a few times, then alighted among the rocks by the spring. The king picked up the cup and again held it to catch the trickling drops. This time he did not wait so long. When the cup was half full, he lifted it toward his mouth. But before it had touched his lips, the hawk swooped down again and knocked it from his hands. Now the king had began to grow angry. He tried again, and for the third time the hawk kept him from drinking. The king was now very angry indeed. How do you dare act so, he cried. If I had you in my hands, I would wring your neck. Then he filled the cup again, but before he tried to drink, he drew his sword. Now, Sir Hawk, he said, this is the last time. He had hardly spoken before the hawk swooped down and knocked the cup from his hand. But the king was looking for this. With a quick sweep of the sword, he struck the bird as it passed. The next moment, the poor hawk lay bleeding and dying at its master's feet. That is what you get for your pains, said Genghis Khan. But when he looked for his cup, he found that it had fallen between two rocks, where he could not reach it. At any rate, I will have a drink from that spring, he said to himself. With that, he began to climb the steep bank to the place from which the water trickled. It was hard work, and the higher he climbed, the thirstier he became. At last he reached the place. There indeed was a pool of water, but what was a lot sorry, what was lying in that pool and almost filling it? It was a huge dead snake of the most poisonous kind. The king stopped. He forgot his thirst. He thought only of the poor dead bird lying on the ground below him. The hawk saved my life, he cried, and how did I repay him? He was my best friend, and I have killed him. He clambered down the bank. He took the bird up gently and laid it in his hunting bag. Then he motioned his horse and rode swiftly home. He said to himself, I have learned a sad lesson today, and that is never do anything in anger. <sighs> okay. The king and his hawk. So... What happened here in this story? Genghis Khan, a very famous person, you pr probably have heard of him, from Mongolia. So, him and his friends went to the woods, or the forest, they went to hunt. They went to hunt for animals to eat, and he had a hawk. A hawk is a type of bird a bird used for hunting and his bird was a good bird and he was thirsty from all of his activities his adventures and, and he wanted to find some water to drink but when he did find the water Something happened, right? Well, his hawk stopped him from drinking the water. So he had his cup, and he wanted to fill up the cup with water. But his hawk knocked the cup out of his hand and spilled the water. His hawk did this, I think, three times. And he got very angry. He said, "Why? Th this is my hawk. He's a good hawk. Why is he knocking the water down and the next time the hawk tried to knock his water down he killed the hawk he killed it now after this he tried to drink the water he lost his cup so he tried to drink the water with his hands maybe he went to where the water was coming out and tried to drink the water but when he went there, he saw there was a snake in the water, a poisonous snake. Uh, poison is something that can kill you, something dangerous. 
and snakes, maybe some chemicals are poisonous. So there was poison in the water. So in the end, we learn that his hawk was stopping him from drinking the water because the hawk wanted to save him. It was a good hawk after all, but he didn't understand this. He just thought, why is my hawk doing this? I'm thirsty. I want to drink this water, but the hawk is stopping me. So I'm going to kill the hawk. And he did. But later, he finds out his hawk knew the water was poisoned. His hawk was smart. And he says in the end, never do anything in anger. Sometimes we do things when we're angry, and later we regret them. Okay, so let's talk about some words in this story. A few words here. First one is the woods. I mentioned this before, the woods. It just means the forest. In English, a lot of the time, we say the woods. We don't usually say the forest. We say the woods. I'm going in the woods. I'm going for a hike in the woods. I'm going hunting in the woods. Uh, Next, we have hounds. Hounds. So, in the story, it says, "Behind, uh, Behind them came the servants with the hounds. What are hounds? A hound is a dog. Usually a dog used for hunting is a hound. So it's a type of dog. Next we have to hunt. We mentioned hunting. If you don't know what hunting is, uh, in the story we have, it was a merry hunting party. There are some other parts I mentioned. They're going hunting. Hunting is searching for animals to, to search. Uh, but hunting implies maybe you will kill the animals. So some people do this for food. Maybe you go into the woods with a gun and you shoot some animals for food or for sport, which is what these guys are doing. Genghis Khan and his friends, they're hunting for sport, which leads to our next word, game. So, in the story, it says they did not find as much game as they expected. They did not find as much game as they expected. What do you mean game? Are they playing a game? No. So, game here is a noun, which means the animals which they are hunting. The animals which they are hunting we call game. So, maybe... In America, for example, hunting is a very popular way to spend time, free time. People hunt deer, uh, turkeys, elk, all kinds of things, all kinds of animals. And they call them game. It's just a name for the animals which are being hunted. It's not a game. It's not like chess. It's the animals. Okay, so next we have wrist. Wrist. On the king's wrist sat his favorite hawk. On the king's wrist sat his favorite hawk. So the the hawk, right? He's sitting on the king's wrist. So the wrist is a part of your arm. Part of your arm next to your hand. The wrist is where you wear a watch. You have a watch. You see, what time is it? I'm going to look at my watch. I look at my wrist. It's the part next to your hand on your arm. So the hawk is sitting on the king's wrist. Wrist. Okay. Now we have prey. So prey is similar to game. This is... uh, P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y. P-R-A-Y, to pray. You go to church, you go to the mosque, you pray, you pray to God. Not the same word, different word. P-R-E-Y, pray. So, this word is usually used with animals. So, maybe with the hawk. 
when animals are hunting, they hunt for prey. So maybe a bird's prey would be a mouse. The bird catches the mouse. The mouse is the prey, the bird's prey. Maybe we have, mm, for example, let's see, a lion. A lion in Africa. The lion is hunting a gazelle. The gazelle is the lion's prey. It's the animal that gets killed. Like a cat and mouse. Cats like to hunt mice. The mouse is the cat's prey. Next word we have spring. Spring. So th spring... So a spring is a, is a kind of metal thing, you know, it it bounces, but not this one. We have two different meanings here. Spring is a place where you find water. So the king goes to the spring to find water, right? The spring is just a place where the water comes out. Maybe, maybe there's a place on the mountain where there are some rocks and there's a little 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 stream of water coming out. It's a spring. Place where water comes. And we have leap. The king leapt. Past tense leapt. Leaped. Uh, the king leapt off his horse to leap. So this just means to jump. He jumped off his horse. He leapt off his horse. And knock. I said this word earlier, knock. So we have knock, like I knock on the door, like, hello? Oh, no. This is So this is a different meaning. To knock, you can knock on the door, or I knock something over. Knock something over, what does that mean? Maybe, let's say I have a cup, and... I hit it with my hand. I knock it over. Now there's water on my desk, on my papers. Oh, man, there's water on my computer. I knocked it over. Or knock something out of my hand. As happened in the story. The, the hawk knocked the water out of the king's hand. He knocked it. He hit it out of his hand. He knocked it. Uh, last word is struck. So, here where the king kills his bird, it says, with a, with a quick sweep of the sword, he struck the bird as it passed. He struck the bird. He hit it. Uh, he hit it hard. If you strike something, usually means you hit it pretty hard. Maybe when there's a fight... We say he struck him. He struck him. He hit him hard. So he used his sword. He hit the bird hard with his sword and killed him. He struck the bird. All right. That's the last of the words here. Now, as I said earlier, I recommend you go back and listen to the story again. Listen for these words, pray, wrist, leap, the king leapt, past tense, the woods, spring. Listen for these words in the story, how they're used. Listen a second time, maybe listen a third time. It wouldn't be bad. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my first podcast. As I said, this is a kind of a test. I'm going to read more short stories in the future. I hope, I hope to do some interviews. I'm going to tell some of my own stories from my adventures around the world. Uh, I'm going to do some talks about life. Just talk about some general topics. Health. Future. The future. Politics. Grammar. All kinds of things. And... I'll end it at that. I'll see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye.